Hi guys, um, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about some tips on dating after narcissistic, after narcissistically abusive relationship and um, some ways to sort of spot or determine whether you are, whether somebody is um, a psychological manipulator and some boundaries that you can set in place so you can avoid getting into another toxic relationship. Um, so first, if you're out of a relationship with a psychological manipulator, narcissist, psychopath, sociopath, active addict, anyone who has been using gaslighting, stonewalling, silent treatment, manipulation, um, you know, uh, word salad, projection, deflection, somebody who has a double life, is a porn addict, a sex addict, or a narc, um, if you're getting out of one of these relationships, obviously you're going to have um, a lot of trauma. Well, most likely you're gonna have a lot of trauma. Some people have actually have uh, complex PTSD. Um, so the first thing that you need to do when you get out of the relationship, or not that you need to do that, but that is a good idea, is to do a lot of self-care and to allow yourself time to heal. So that means, you know, in my world, uh, my recommendation is take some time off from dating so that you don't rush right into some other toxic situation so you can properly heal. I mean, one way to tell if, if somebody's a narcissist is they never take time to heal between relationships. They always have, they almost always have overlap or they go from from one relationship to the next. People are just interchangeable, like washing machines to them, just objects. So they just next, next, next. Uh, you know, they don't take any breaks. They can't be alone, right? Because if for them to be alone means they actually have to face the reality of who they are and they're not able or willing to do that. So for you, if you're one of the warriors, and I don't like the term victim, and I'm even getting away from the term survivor, if you are a warrior, which means you have gotten out, you have escaped from this sort of abusive relationship, take the time to heal. Um, there's some really good books I've referenced, Healing from Hidden Abuse by Shannon Thomas. Um, Richard Grannon has some really excellent um, online courses, how to heal from narcissistic abuse. Um, Dr. Freeman has some really good courses on healing the brain. Um, her website is um, Neuro, the Neuro Instincts um, Academy, I believe, and she's got some really good courses on there. So I would say, you know, do some of the courses, um, read some of the books, um, Whole Again by Jackson McKenzie. I've mentioned that a lot because it's one of my favorite of the 30 books I've read. It's so good. Um, that one's really good. And then um, also, um, Kim Saeed has a really good website and she's also got some good healing courses for you. So I would say do some, read the literature, educate yourself, um, do some courses to heal, um, get a good therapist who understands um, these relationships. Um, I, I did um, EMDR therapy, I think is really helpful. Um, if you can find a study in your area for transcranial magnetic stimulation, um, that will help with the complex PTSD symptoms. Um, some people choose to get on a, you know, a low dose of um, SSRI antidepressants because you are going to go through a lot of these stages of grieving, depression, anger, bargaining, all the grief stages. So you know, these are some things you can do. I would say get a meditation practice. I use prayer a lot and meditation, yoga, climbing. You know, um, surround yourself with loving friends, safe people, kind people. So these are some of the things that you can do to heal. Take some time off. Um, I highly recommend reading a book called Dating with Boundaries by Dr. Cloud. Um, it is so good. And it gives some very specific, great instructions on how to date with boundaries. Um, usually if you were in a relationship with a psychological manipulator, um, you probably have porous boundaries. And it could be just because they were pushed so much over the years, or it could be that you came into the relationship with porous boundaries. Um, a lot of people who are with these psychological manipulators had um, childhood trauma. I would say address the attachment issues that you have and the childhood trauma issues. These are all things that you can do. And then ways to, um, once you start dating, some suggestions, um, because one, one sign of a psychological manipulator is too much too soon. They rush the relationship, they're all over you. Uh, they call you all the time, text you all the time, come over all the time, they're just always all over you. That is a red flag. 
Um, I would say um, if too much too soon, huge red flag. So some boundaries that you can put in place. Um, there is a dating, um, I have this um, dating guideline that, that's very helpful that says that um, for the first month of dating, your first four dates, um, you should only go on, it's recommended that you go on one date per week. The date should be, um, you should take separate cars. It should be less than a hundred dollars. Um, you do not, um, you do not talk about your past relationships. You do not talk about your childhood trauma. You do not talk about um, your trauma at all for the first four dates or the first month of dating. Right? Wish I would have known that, but I'm learning it now. Um, so. You don't talk about your trauma. You don't. You keep it light, and you do not. You know. You don't go to each other's houses. You don't have long telephone conversations. You don't text a million times a day. Um, it's recommended that you text only for logistics, and you can talk on the phone for the first month, like once or twice a week. So basically, one date a week. Talk on the phone once or twice a week. Don't delve into your trauma, your your, your all of your baggage. Um, obviously, you know when you're building a relationship down the road, those are things that you have to discuss, right? But um, in the beginning, you know, keep it light and try to get to know this person. You know, are they somebody that has integrity? Are they did they, are they honest? Are they kind? Um, watch how they treat the waiter. Watch how they treat the people that can do nothing for them. Watch how they treat the homeless guy, you know, on the street. Um, th those are things that to really look for. So just really take this process very slow and um, don't have sex don't have physical intimacy within the first month um even the dating plan recommends that you like can do like kisses on the cheek or whatever but no um no making out no sex none of that for the first four dates um and then when you go from five to eight then you can sort of um progress a little bit but still um this dating plan recommends that you don't you don't get physically intimate until you have been um until you've known the person for like at least 90 days um and you know this this isn't just for people who are coming out of abusive relationships like these are actually pretty prudent ideas for dating in general i think from what i've read and of course i didn't know any of this i just recently discovered it um you know, I've been lightly trying to lightly date after um, narcissistic abuse, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm learning the hard way. But um, yeah, so these are just some ideas that that you could do um, to really, you know, pay attention, and then ask the questions, and and notice this: like, does this person are they matching you on basic? Core values like do you both share a spiritual tradition um, it may not have to be the exact same one but do you both you know do you both have a spiritual tradition not that everyone needs to have that but you should probably be if you have one you should probably be with somebody else who has one you know are your core values similar do you you know do you both want kids or do you both not want kids I mean these are just things to consider like do you have um, a similar you know similar life goals and ask the person like what you know not not you don't need to go super deep on the first four dates but like in general like is this person somebody who you know are they honest do they have integrity are they um, do they have good relationships with other people people that's a huge one to look for do they have long-term friends that they have closely connected good relationships with do how are their relationships with their family if they're distant and they see their family once or twice a year and they have these stilted cold unemotional non um, connected relationships with no emotional intimacy like that is something to really pay attention to right and you know are they is this person able have you noticed in the first you know, four weeks of dating, are they able to acknowledge what is wrong with them? Are they able to tell you what their flaws are, what they're working on? Are they able to apologize? Do they have um, some self-reflection? Do they have some introspection? You know, or, you know, in general with narcs, you can see the first, you know, part of the dating relationship, like they typically agree with everything that the other person um, says. So, you know, did the, does this person have their own ideas, their own philosophies, their own political beliefs, or are they um, just nearing you? You know, if somebody agrees with everything you say or do in the first part of dating, like that is actually a huge 
red flag. If they try to rush the relationship, if they try to go straight to physical intimacy, I'm not saying that that means that they're a narc, but these are just some red flags. So really take your time, pay attention, read the books. That dating with boundaries is so good. And you can Google like um, codependent um, dating plan or recovery dating plan. There's a lot of dating plans on the internet that can give you some guidelines. And obviously you have, you've got to determine your own for yourself, but these are just some suggestions so that you can really pay attention to, you know, whether you are finding yourself in a relationship with somebody who um, does not have your best interest at heart, somebody who is only looking out for um, themselves, somebody that wants, that's a pathological take and somebody who's manipulative um, just these are just things to notice and is this person open are they able to be vulnerable are they able to tell you like what's wrong with them the mistakes they've made in their past are they able to tell you what happened forensically in their past relationships are they able to tell you what their part was in you know detail and that is not something you want to get into within the first month of dating and the first four dates but it is something you want to start exploring you know in date sort of five through eight but very very casually and then the date eight eight and plus is where you start kind of having some of those discussions um, and then this dating plan also recommends that you know before you have any sort of physical intimacy obviously you know you both get STD testing you discuss it you talk about um, what sort of birth control you're going to be using you talk about um, your past you know relationships and uh, not too much but your your you know in your intimacy um, your sexual history right and then some people choose and I think this is a very very valid choice that they may not want to have physical intimacy in until marriage they may not want to have physical intimacy until um, there is a you know love and commitment and that commitment you know maybe needs to be some sort of actual skin in the game and that's going to depend upon you and what your needs are and what what works for you but these are just some things to consider uh, you know your time is a gift. It's a privilege to spend time with you. Your body, your soul, your spirit, your your emotional, um, you know, being. That's a gift. And of course, when somebody gives that to you, that's a gift from them. But acknowledging that it's a gift, rather than you know something that should be just thrown away lightly or given to every you know stranger that walks into your into your room. So um, I don't know if this is helpful, but this is just some of the stuff that I'm learning on this. Um, incredibly interesting journey. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.